Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for joining me today for number two video of my spring craft show series. If you're new to my channel and you love budget home decor DIYs, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Today I have four more craft show projects. first project I'm making today is a photo display with three clips. I'm using Jenga blocks and a pack of one gallon paint stir sticks. So these are actual Jenga game blocks. For each photo display board I'm making, I need 20 of the Jenga blocks. And what I'm going to do, like I do always, even with the tumbling tower blocks, is I'm going to glue them together in rows here. So for getting ready for this project, I'm going to make two rows of four and four rows of three and let those dry. Now I'm taking my pack of one gallon paint sticks and cutting them where that little indent is while they're still in the pack so I can cut them all in one um, time with the saw. Now I'm gonna take my mineral chalk paint and I'm going to give the fronts of each of these just one coat. Um, you can use any colors that you choose. Now that my sticks of Jenga blocks are dry, I'm just running my sanding sponge to get any glue that maybe has seeped through. So here you see what I need to make one display and I'm going to give each of my sticks here a coat of our black chalk paint called ink and then I'm going to make two rows of seven. So I'm taking a set of four and a set of three and I'm gluing those together now. I don't do all seven at one time just because I try to get them as straight as possible and I just find it works better to make them in four and three and then glue them together when they're dry and painted. So for this display now, I'm gonna have two rows of seven and two rows of three. So here you can see I'm going to take one row of seven there closest to me, and then I'm going to glue a row of three there at the top, and then I'm going to glue my other row of seven to the bottom of the row of three, and then the other row of three will go across the bottom. So basically I'm just making a big rectangle, trying to let each piece dry as I go. And then I'm just going to give a light sanding. You can do this if you'd like, it just gives it a little bit more of a rustic look and just showing some of that natural wood on some of the edges. Now I'm taking my 10 paint stir stick pieces and I'm going to space them evenly across the back of my frame, spacing those out and then going ahead and gluing each piece. You can use hot glue or wood glue. I'm sticking with wood glue for this project and just keeping them as evenly spaced as possible as you glue them across the back. Now, once those are all dry, I'm taking three of these mini clothespins and I am hot gluing them to the center of a few of my paint sticks. I decided to do one at the top, then leave three empty, another one, three more empty, and then another clothespin. This just gives you space. You can clip three photos or even larger items to this display board. I really love this project. It's pretty simple to put together, but I think makes a great gift or a great display piece for anyone's home. Here I'm just tying some jute twine that I have um, three strands together and we're gonna knot it on either of the sides to make this able to hang. Thank you. 
And here's our finished product with a couple photos of my family on it. You could put some vinyl or some sticker letters at the top to say family or memories. Um, I decided just to leave it plain so that the purchaser could uh, customize it if they chose. Our second project, I'm going to make two more of these flower crate baskets using the wooden crate, um, some six by eight canvases, some floral foam and floral moss. Like in the last video, to remove the canvas from these frames, you're just gonna go around it with your fingertip craft knife. Peel away the canvas in one large piece so you can use it on a future product. And then go ahead and take the staples out, which is the most difficult part. But just using a flathead screwdriver and then some pliers, you can remove all of those staples. Once all the staples are removed, I did give a light sanding to the wood frames here from our canvases. And I'm going to glue with wood glue, two of them together, staple sides facing each other. So we have a nice clean edge and then set those aside to dry. While those are drying, I'm gonna take two of my crates here and give them a coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. I'm just going to go all the way around the outside, the bottom, and then just this top edge here. The rest we'll have covered with florals. Now I took that frame once it was dry and I did cut it in half on a table saw. And then I'm going ahead and painting each of my little handles here with white. This is not a necessary step because we will be wrapping them with jute twine. So just starting with some hot glue around the bottom of one side and getting your jute twine going. Then we're gonna go ahead and just wrap it all the way around the handle. You could just leave your handle plain painted if you wanted. I just like the jute twine. Now to add a little bit of distressing to our crates, I am gonna take the dark brown paint called Truffle and just barely dry brush this on just to give some worn look to our crate and around that top edge as well. And now taking some hot glue, I'm going to glue my jute twine wrapped handle to each side of my crate and then just make sure that is dried completely before moving on to the next step. Inside our crate, we're gonna go ahead and put some hot glue and add a little bit of this floral foam. You'll just have to cut it to fit inside your crate. And then a little more hot glue and cover up that floral foam with some moss. You could use reindeer moss, Spanish moss, whatever you can find at your Dollar Tree. I decided to use these three different colors of lavender from Dollar Tree, but you could of course use any florals or greenery that you want. I'm just arranging them in here so that the same colors are not right next to each other and making sure I get both sides fully um, covered. I did use a full bush of each of the three colors, if that makes sense. So then we're just going to add one more little touch by taking some of this black and white gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and hot glue it around that center um, section of our wood crate, just attaching it on the back side with some hot glue. And using that same ribbon, I did decide to go ahead and add a small bow. So I'm just tying a bow here and then adjusting it, getting it trimmed, and we'll just hot glue it right there to the center of the front of our wood basket. And 
And here's our finished product number two, our little wood basket made with a wood crate and the frame from a canvas. I love how you can customize this with any florals. Our third project, I'm going to use some of these jot chalkboards, some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, some jute twine, and some greenery. What we're going to make here is a wood framed chalkboard that can hang. So I am using tumbling tower blocks, like I said, and for each chalkboard, I need 14 tumbling tower blocks, two rows of four and two rows of three. Here you can see I'm doing the blocks for all four chalkboards. So once those are glued together and dry, I am using the antique wax for this. I just think it looks really pretty with the black of the chalkboard. And kind of like the photo display boards, we're just using wood glue to glue together our rectangles. Here again, I'm using four on the sides and three at the top and bottom. Once those frames for our chalkboards are dry completely, you can see where it's going to kind of line up. And then we'll just take our hot glue gun and go around the edge of our chalkboard and then lay our tumbling tower block frame on top. I sure hope everyone is having a great week. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy seeing the budget home decor DIYs. Once we have our frame on our chalkboards, then we can go ahead and dress it up a little bit with some greenery or some florals. I decided to keep it neutral just by using some eucalyptus greenery I had here. Depending on what kind you have, you might have to maneuver it around a little while, but once you get all the greenery in place how you want it, then you can go ahead and maybe add a bow to the center like I'm going to do here again with that same Dollar Tree gingham ribbon, just tying a simple bow, playing around with it till I get the ears um, how I want them, however big, and then hot gluing that to the center of your greenery. I did go ahead and make another smaller bow to glue on top of the larger one just to give a little bit more dimension there you can see. The last step then would just be to get some jute twine. I went ahead and doubled it over just to make it a little thicker. I'm gonna tie a knot on each end and then flipping my chalkboard over, hot gluing each of the knots to the corners on the back of my chalkboard. And here's the finished chalkboard. I'm probably going to sell these with one of these chalk writers from Dollar Tree just for some added value. All in all, this probably cost me two, two fifty to make. And our last project, I'm going to use 14 paint stir sticks, a page from a calendar, some antique wax, some Mod Podge, and some jute twine. So here what I'm doing is I have 12, I believe, 12 paint sticks lying down there, and then I'm taking three more, so I'm sorry, I'm using 15 for each project, and I'm gonna glue three of them across the back, one on each side, and then one down the middle to make kind of a palette wood effect. Now, I want this to be looking like a finished product, so I am going to paint the back with my black chalk paint, just so it looks, like I said, nice and finished for my craft show. And then once that's dry on the front side, I'm going to do my antique wax. So it looks like nice stained wood for my project. Brush all that on and then wipe off the excess. And you guys already know, I just love the antique wax. Once that antique wax is completely dry, I'm gonna take my matte finish Mod Podge and I'm gonna go ahead and cover the entire front side of my sign here to get a nice finished look. And then taking a little bit of water, I'm gonna spritz my calendar page and center that on my wood sign here that I'm making. Being careful to try and get it centered and rub out any bubbles 
and then let that dry completely. Once it's dry or almost dry, I'm gonna take some jute twine, attaching it to the back with hot glue. I went in about half inch from the edge and did about 10 times around to cover up where the calendar page, um, where the edge of the calendar page is. And I did this on all four sides. I love the finished look of this. I did make the two you saw here and then I made another one with a white background that says gather together. And here's what it looks like. Literally this project cost me maybe a dollar to make. Well guys, I hope you liked those four more craft show projects. Please let me know in the comments which of these was your favorite. That fourth one was a brand new project for me, but so simple to make and I just love how it looks. Thanks again for all your support on my channel. Please like this video and share it. <music>